Hi, I'm Paul Friedman, founder of the Marriage Foundation. Now, we get people writing into our counselors all the time. It's a free service. And we've just started this to read those questions. And then I supply answers and commentary. And it seems to be well received. So let's, let's just take a look here. So this is someone who wrote in. Uh, the last counselor to respond was very good. He backslash she encouraged me to go back and re-watch specific video segments. Must have been on the sew technique. This means that this person is already taking the course. Um, and it looks like uh, she talks about her husband. So she's taking the course for women. Uh, we separate them. And it's very important to do that. Okay. The last counselor to respond was very good. He, she encouraged me to go back and rewatch specific video segments. While I haven't made the time to rewatch them, the number of times they suggested, it's really important. I did make some progress. Good. This week I'm having an emotional setback. Since beginning your program, I believe my husband and I have made progress to achieving that ever elusive, perfect marriage. Take a look at how it's so hard to accept that you can have a perfect marriage. And it's amazing because you can, you deserve it. You should. We get married with a purpose to have happiness, love and harmony, but we, we don't go there because we're afraid over a 50% divorce rate, but we know how to have a perfect marriage now. Okay. We don't really fight and I hold my mouth and check with my teeth practicing. So this is something I talk about in the course. Don't let anything negative get past your teeth. All right. This past week, I noticed signs that my husband exhibits when he's looking at or engaging flirtatiously with other women. Not good. He admitted he was looking at pictures, even though he had recently watched one of your videos that say, don't look at porn. Yeah, you should never look at porn. If you're a man, women don't look at porn. Usually if you're a man and you're looking at porn, it's, it's so weird. It's so weird because it's engaging your mind in something that is so not real. It's driven by your physical, your biology, it doesn't create anything positive. And you may say, well, it creates release. So what? So does letting blood out of your veins. It's don't do it. You don't shouldn't masturbate either. I know this is going up against the world, but so what? The world is wrong. He told me months ago he didn't need it anymore as I was satisfying all he needed. No, that's not why he should stop looking at porn. And they're not even really connected. Knowing he is back to these behaviors and maybe more is very disheartening beyond words. Now we're getting to something. It's disheartening because you're allowing it to be disheartening. Your heartening world shouldn't be affected by his behaviors. And you say, how could I not be affected by his behaviors? I'm married to him because you're an individual human being married or not. You're an individual. You have control over your joy or sadness, and you should always choose joy. Behaviors and maybe more is very disheartening beyond words. So she's allowing her emotions to drag her down rather than understanding emotions in this world, Western psychology has decided that we should honor them because they don't understand it. All they have to fall back on Western psychologists are is Freudian nonsense. Freud was an atheist, so he did not recognize souls. So he didn't get that. We are souls who have a mind and a body. Of course, we have a mind. That mind is our possession, like a computer, like a car, like our bodies. It isn't us. So just because it's flashing a warning, which is what an emotion actually is, it's sort of like a pop up in your computer. You don't honor pop ups in your computer. You don't honor emotions in your mind. And 
because we're taught this from a young age, honor your emotions. Oh, you, you feel this? Why do you feel that way? How does this make you feel? How does that make you? This is all nonsense. And it's very distracting. It even takes us away from what we get married for, which is love. You see, love is not an emotion. Love is it. Love is what life is all about, is being love, being in love. And marriage is an amazing microcosm of our relationship with life because we learn in our marriage how to love unconditionally. And that love is coming up from our essence. We're souls. And emotions are a big distraction. And she's being distracted here big time. So, huh, sorry about that. More disheartening. This has me on the brink of exploding. Your mind is on the brink of exploding. Your soul, you're already exploding with joy and love, but you're not aligned with that. I am practicing those calming techniques for the moment and I have not yet let my fears take over. Thank God she wrote in. The calming techniques are good. What we do is we, I teach you calming techniques in the courses that also show you the relationship between the breath, the heart, and your psychology. So it really helps to do it. But we have to become educated and that's why she was asked to keep repeating those lessons in the course because I if you don't go over it I'll give you a great explanation of how the mind interacts with the body and how you the soul interact with the mind it's a little bit extensive so but you got to get it you got to get it or you're a victim of the mind and the body for the rest of your life the husband is a victim of his body his biology is telling him, no, no, you got to have sex, you got to have sex. And the mind is interpreting it as, oh, got to watch porn so you can get off. It's all nonsense. Okay. You see, we give so much judgment to these things that we lose sight of how simple it is. This is one of the problems. Okay. He is often clueless in his behaviors as his drinking and smoking truly distort his perception of right and wrong. This is true, what she says, but it's not her job to monitor him. It's her job to love him with all her heart, mind, and soul and let that light of love attract him to her. That's what it's all about. This is still unacceptable. Unacceptable. What the heck does that mean, unacceptable? So what are you going to do? Chop his head off? Chop off his member? What are you going to do? What do you mean it's unacceptable? It means that your mind has you owned, that you have imposed limitations based on judgment, not forgiveness, not love, which is why he got married to you but based on judgment. Now, you may be moral, that you're moral, but your morality is where you have grown to as a human being. Your morality is for you. It's not, we don't live in the dark ages. What are you gonna burn them at the stake? You are not here to guide and guard him. You are here for yourself to learn to love him unconditionally unconditionally you see your morality is for you it is not to impose upon him you must understand this is a very core part of understanding each other we have free will free will is a gift from God to the individual it doesn't matter how extreme someone is God is very clear in all of his scripture Judge not, lest ye be judged. This is not just a platitude. This is telling you as an individual that it's none of your business. How you are affected is about how you perceive. You use your free will. And so when you see him doing things that are misguided and bad for him, 
It is your job to love him unconditionally, to understand him, to comfort him, to be there for him. Does this sound too extreme for you? You have to get here eventually or you're not going to have a great marriage, you see. The perfect marriage begins with you. The perfect marriage is an individual perception. You're not perfect. Your husband is not perfect. Your wife is not perfect. But the marriage is perfect. It is designed perfectly. But we can only get from it to the degree that we learn. So even in the course, there's levels and levels and levels. But we never judge the partner based on the level where the, they are. We always look back at ourselves. As soon as a thought comes up that is condemning, critical, we go, wait a minute, I'm not perfect. Let me adjust me. Adjust me, not them. You can't tell me this is okay. I'm not telling you it's okay. I'm telling you the right way to perceive it. If I love him, there needs to be a right way for me to approach this that fits. That fits what? <laughs> fits is unconditional love is what fits. Historically, if he feels threatened, he will make an effort to stop these actions. And I know he had for months and that's not the right way. But he shouldn't be scrutinized by you to where he's feeling all this pressure. We grow not based on how people push us. We grow based on when it's revealed to us that our current thinking in a particular way is self-harmful. That's when we grow. Or hurting someone who we love, that's when we grow. But we can't expect him to go, oh, it's hurting you, so I better back off. He's got to come to that realization on his own. He won't do it because he's supposed to. He'll do it in his time and in his way. And being married means being accepting of the other. Doesn't mean accepting that he's going out and having sex with other women. Then you need to be protected. But again, you don't need to condemn, even that extreme. Most of our women clients come to us because their husbands are having an affair and they have a choice. They could still strive for that marriage that they want and they'll get it, but they cannot control their husbands. And that's a very difficult thing for people to understand, both men and women. We want to always control everything around us, but we don't control ourselves. And controlling ourselves is the secret sauce. If I love him, what do you mean if I love him? There needs to be a right way for me to approach this that fits. Historically, if he feels threatened, he'll make an effort to stop these actions. And I know he had for months and it doesn't work. I'm not sure what triggered the setbacks. I can see now what triggered them and how I should address without derailing the progress we have made. Thank you for your support. Yes, she made progress because she's learned to zip the lip when she wants to say something. But the changes have to be inner changes. So she's just begun this course or she would already have been practicing the so technique and understanding it more and more because we understand ourselves through the so technique, which is proprietary by the way and we learn in layers all of us do you know even when you went to school and you had to learn math first you had to learn how to count and then you learn how to add subtract multiply and we move things around and it's in layers and then we can add algebra I would never got there <laughs> personally but that's how it's done and we live in a mechanical universe. So there is a way, and this is how we set up our courses. It's set up so you have a mechanical process. So you advance a step at a time. And as you do, the benefits that come are just amazing. I mean, thousands, thousands have benefited from using our courses and not just a little bit. 
they have that elusive, perfect marriage. It's not that elusive. It really isn't. So that's that. I hope you like this. Leave a comment. Let me know if this sort of video is beneficial for you individually. And you could even tell, tell me how. And that'll determine whether we keep going with this. Because usually what we do is we pick a topic and, and I discuss the topic. I like doing these things because it deals with so many topics, not just a topic. And I think it's more beneficial. So I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. Like the video, even if you don't like the video, I'm joking and subscribe to the channel that's always good if you're not if you're not regular with us and god bless you take care thank you